In this video, we're going to solve the same example we did before, but now with the two other methods, undetermined coefficients and variation parameters. So for both of these methods, we again need the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this problem. This process is the same no matter which method you're using. You always need that as a starting point. So we'll start by finding those first. I won't walk through all the details, but I'll fill them out here. Which this then allows us to write the general solution to the homogeneous problem. C1, 1 minus 1, e to the t, plus C2, 1 minus 2, e to the 3t. Now let's start by using undetermined coefficients to solve the non-homogeneous part. So with that, we now need to make a guess for the non-homogeneous part of the problem. And since we see an e to the t, e to the 2t up in here, that's what we want to guess. But we see that e to the t also solves the homogeneous part. So this is not quite the right guess. We have to guess a vector a times t e to the t plus b times e to the t and c e to the 2t. Because this solves the homogeneous part, we have to add a t in here, but because we're no longer doing just a single equation, we're doing a system, we have to include both the a and the b term that correspond to the t and the non-t term of that equation. So now we're going to rewrite this for convenience, our particular solution as an a1 a2 times t e to the t plus a b1 b2 e to the t plus a c1 c2 e to the 2t. Now I want to plug this into our so differential equations and see what has to happen. So our equation said that x prime should equal minus 1 minus 2 4 5 x plus e to the t e to the 2t. I now want to plug this solution into both sides of that equation. So for the derivative, I'm going to get an a1, a2 times a product rule, t e to the t plus e to the t. I get a b1, b2 times an e to the t, and then a c1, c2 times 2 e to the 2t. I will regroup some terms here. I see a1, a2 times t e to the t. For e to the t, I have a1 plus b1 and a2 plus b2 times e to the t, and then 2c1, 2c2, e to the 2t. I'm matching up with these functions again because when I plug my solution into the right-hand side, I'm going to get those sorts of functions as well. Now for the right-hand side, we're going to want to apply this matrix to each of these vectors as we go. Because it's linear, I can do it term by term. So on the right-hand side, which I'll write over here as ax plus f, just to sort the notation a little bit, I'm going to see this matrix times this vector times t e to the t. So that gets me a minus a1 minus 2a2, a 4a1 plus 5a2 times t e to the t. And I'll see this exact same pattern repeated for both the b and the c vectors multiplied by their respective functions. And then I tack on my e to the t, e to the 2t that came from this last bit over here. Now I want to put this last bit, this non-homogeneous part, into here where it belongs. So I'm going to take this e to the t and I want to add it to where it fits right up in here with this e to the t. So I'll put a plus 1 right in this spot here and also a plus one down here to account for the e to the 2t. And now I want to make the right side match the left. Here is my right side, which is this expression here, and here is my left side with this expression here. Now just like our undetermined coefficients before, I'm pairing up the individual terms on each of the functions. So that means that this vector attached to t e to the t must match this vector attached to e to the t because that's how they're paired up by functions of t. The same goes for the e to the t vector and the e to the 2t vector. This is going to give me six equations that I'll need to solve for the coefficients. So for example, for the first component of t e to the t, I get that this must equal this. So a1 equals minus a1 minus 2a2. The second equation will tell me that a2 equals 4a1 plus 5a2. And I continue onward to get to having six equations. So let's start with the C equations. So I move everything to the left-hand side for the green equations that are the C equations. 
I will get that 3C1 plus 2C2 equals 0. And minus 4C1 minus 3C2 equals 1. Then try to solve this out. Let's multiply the first equation by 3. The second equation by 2. So I end up with a 9C1 plus 6C2 equals 0. And a negative 8C1 minus 6C2 equals 2. Add them together. Tells me that C1 equals 2. And therefore C2 must be minus 3. And that gets me one vector for my solution. The other bit's a little more tricky, and that's because we had to multiply by this t. So let's start with the a equations and see what we get. So for the a equations, if I add a1 to the other side in the first equation, I will get that 2a1 equals minus 2a2, or just that a1 equals negative a2. And the second equation will tell me nothing because I will then see that if a1 is minus a2, that just gives me a2 equals a2. We'll discuss why this happens once we solve for the b's. But we'll take this fact and use it to help us solve the b equations. If I plug that into the b equations, what I end up with is that my two equations become negative a2 plus b2 equals minus b1 minus 2b2 plus 1. And a2 plus b2, this should be b1 in the first row, is 4b1 plus 5b2. So rearrange some terms here, I will get that 2b1 plus 2b2 equals 1 plus a2. And 4b1 plus 4b2 equals a2. Right, basically I moved the b2 over here, moved all of these guys over here and the a2 over the other side. Now, this tells us something here. Because, if I look at these two equations, the bottom one is double the top one. So if I double the first equation, I will get 4b1 plus 4b2 equals 2 plus 2a2, but the second equation, is just a2. So these two things must actually be equal. So 2a2 plus 2 equals a2 means that a2 is negative 2. And with that, I can then conclude that 4b1 plus 4b2 must equal minus 2, or that b1 plus b2 equals minus 1 half. And now I have some freedom here to choose b1 and b2. Why is that? Well, let's look back at what b1 is attached to. The, these b's were attached to an e to the t term. But that solves the homogeneous equation. So I'm expecting to have extra flexibility in how I pick b, because I can always regroup terms from this homogeneous part into here to change what this value is, but not change its impact on the solution. So the fact that I have this b1 plus b2 flexibility here is because b1 plus b2 equaling 0 solves the homogeneous problem. So for this, I'm going to choose b1 equals minus 1 half and b2 equals 0. I have a2 here, and my step up here tells me that a1 must be 2. So putting all of this together gives me a non-homogeneous solution of the form 2 minus 2 times t e to the t plus negative 1 half and 0 e to the t plus a 2 minus 3 e to the 2t. And that would be your non-homogeneous solution. You could then add on the solution to the homogeneous problem to get the full general solution. Now, for variation of parameters, we have the buildup already in place. We had our general solution to the homogeneous problem from before, from which we can build our fundamental matrix e to the t and minus e to the t, e to the 3t and minus 2 e to the 3t, and we can go from there. So from this, this method says that our solution is x of t times u, where u prime is given by x inverse times f. So we find x inverse. This inverse is given by 1 over the determinant 
So e to the t minus 2 e to the 3t minus e to the 3t minus e to the t. Swap the on diagonals, negate the off diagonals. This part here is a minus 2 e to the 4t plus e to the 4t. So this whole thing becomes a negative e to the minus 4t. When I multiply that through, this matrix becomes a positive 2 e to the minus t, a positive e to the minus t, an e to the minus 3t, and an e to the minus 3t with my signs in the bottom row. Okay, then x inverse times f will be that matrix times our vector e to the t, e to the 2t, which we can then carry out. So 2 e to the minus t times e to the t is 2, e to the minus t times e to the 2t is e to the t, e to the minus 3t times e to the t is minus e to the minus 2t, and this will be a minus e to the minus t. This is then our u prime. So I integrate this expression. Give me that u should be 2t plus e to the t plus c1, and a 1 half e to the minus 2t plus e to the minus t plus c2, or plus a vector c on the end if you want to write it that way. And then I multiply this by my fundamental matrix x. So my solution will be capital X times u, which is capital X times that vector, which gives us our solution as, which works for a solution. But to see how things pair up with the other methods, we can now match up these solutions in the right form by pulling out the functions they are attached. For instance, I can put the two of these terms in one vector. I can put all the e to the 2t terms into one vector, and so on. And that will give us something that looks like this. And that will give us our solution. Note that again, we see the homogeneous solution appearing right here as a part of the solution, which is expected to do so. Now, if you check real quick, this will not be the same solution we got earlier for undetermined coefficients. If we go back to check that, this matches, this matches, but this vector doesn't match. And that was the bit I was saying about flexibility in the choice of the b coefficients. These b's could be anything as long as they added to minus a half because of the flexibility in the homogeneous part of the solution. So in this case, we picked it to be minus a half, and so we got minus a half and zero. If we go down below, we saw one half and minus one, which also add to minus a half. And if you basically just take one of these and take it out of here, you'll get to the one half and zero that we had for the other method. So all of these work as solutions. It doesn't matter which way you get to them, you can get to these solutions anyway, and any sort of flexibility you have here is allowed in these general solutions. So that's an example worked out via both undetermined coefficients and variation of parameters, describing how you get the results and how they could compare for these types of problems.